So I'm going to try to make this as entertaining and informative as a, a Wednesday morning uh, education session on data could be. Um, so hopefully I, I uh, check all the boxes on that for you guys. Um, so I guess start out introductions. Uh, I'm John Oakley. I'm the president of Tiger Data. Our company it, uh, is a front office platform company for convenience retailers. We work with a lot of convenience retailers uh, chains across the U.S. Um, a little more about me. I, I guess the best way to describe myself, I'm a, I'm a technologist. I, uh, I've spent the better part of my career uh, working with retailers uh, in retail and, uh, and then also in the hospitality industry. Uh, and my passion has always been uh, in designing and evangelizing for a technology company, uh, that relationship between people and the technology that you use for and just being an actual sense of how it works. John, I have this question. Yeah, go ahead. Front office. Yes. I, I'm really dumb, I guess. I don't know what that means. That's, we're uh, uh, we're going to get into that throughout the presentation. You'll know very well for the Okay. Yeah. So, because we it's a new deal, deal it's a back it's office, office, office. Exactly. It's a newer, okay. it's a newer, it's a newer category of software in this industry, but it's around, been around in other parts of the right. world for a while. It's just like everything else, the technology takes a little while longer for you to get to uh, our, our industry. So, okay. so Today's topic is on data, and uh, the, uh, the focus of the topic is really that convenience retail has a problem with data. I say a problem with data, not that you guys have a data problem. It's not that you have too much data, uh, but the friction between how you utilize it. You're not getting the full potential of it, and you're not able to always see the whole picture of it. So we're going to dive deep into that through presentation today. We're going to learn about why that's the case. and some uh, solutions to be able to better handle that, okay? Now, when used effectively, data has a lot of power. Um, it, can, it can drive efficiencies, it can create uh, cost, uh, cost savings, it can uh, uh, drive profit throughout your business, um, but it takes a lot of work to get there because of you know, where it's coming from and how, how it's working. And I want to talk about how data has its power, and I'm going to Kind of use uh, smartphones as an example. Um, back when they first came out, I, like many people, uh, didn't really feel the need for getting one right away. Like, I was kind of wondering where my buttons went. Um, and I didn't really realize the full potential of it at the time. But um, as I started to use it, I started to realize it was a whole lot easier to use that than it was with my Blackberry. Sure, I still had, uh, with my Blackberry, I could you know, send emails and text messages, make phone calls. I could do most of the things I could do with uh, my uh, iPhone that I got. But it was a whole lot easier to do with the iPhone. And then the removal of the buttons really changed how we access data, how we interacted with data. And that was transformative. It, it opened up all sorts of new opportunities that we all know of today where I can, you know, book uh, my vacation plan with my family and use it all the way through the trip to help guide me through from going to the airport to get my car afterwards, to order food, and all these things that we do today that we didn't even realize at the time. And so data also has that same transformative power uh, with your business. It's about harnessing that. And so that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today. And um, we got to first start with what what is the relationship between data and work? So I think this diagram really describes it uh, succinctly here. Um, when we think about data, most of the work is happening down here in the base and collecting, gathering it, you know, making sense of it, and then trying to turn it into information. But what we want is up at the top in the capstone there of actionable insights. Okay? That's where the value of the data is. That's where your goals are. That's where you can get the return on investment and all the things that you want. But you don't spend very much time there because you're doing all this work down here. And um, you can see that in, in your everyday business. Like, we, uh, you know, anytime we need information, anytime we're trying to make a decision, it takes a lot of work for us to be able to get to that information. So how do we reduce that? How do we make that more efficient? Um, and there's a lot of different ways to approach that. Kind of talk more about our industry and uh, technology of a whole in the industry, because this influences why 
it's a little more difficult for us to, to get the true value out of our data. Okay? We're different than other verticals of retail. Right? Um, and the fact that you know, our product is convenience. Okay? We're providing uh, things that are impulse purchases, things that people need at the last mile. And that's a lot of different things. It's more of a method than an actual product. Okay? And so we think about clothing retail or, or uh, you know, to, you know, to big box or, or any of these other things, they, they, they're very much more product focused and it's a much more simple uh, type of need than it is for us when we have fuel, we have merchandise, we have food service, we have car wash, we have all the things that are convenient. And from a technology vendor perspective, that makes it a lot more difficult for us to provide what we call the whole product to you. Okay? And so for any, um, any product that you guys are purchasing, any technology product, we, we have to be able to fulfill all the needs for you to want to use that, okay? And I'll use point of sale as an example there. So point of sale for you is a lot more complicated than it say is for a clothing company, okay? Um, you know, um, or let's take restaurant, for instance. Um, Toast came into the restaurant industry a few years ago, and they pretty much took home market. Um, they would have had a hard, much harder time doing that in community survey. Like, right away, they would have to do EFT integration, um, then, then you have uh, fleet integrations, you have scanning, all these other things that make it much more complicated and it would have been a much more difficult ask for them to be able to try to do that. It would have been a lot harder for them to do that. Same thing with your existing vendors. When they're bringing up your next uh, uh, generation of their products, they still have to be able to fulfill all the same needs. And it's it's much, much more complicated for them to deliver on it. And so the reason for... Um, kind of stepping back and focusing on this is that um, we're not really an industry that uh, um, is ideal for like the all-in-one type of vendor, okay? Um, we have a lot of good products that we try to connect together, okay? And that creates big gaps, particularly in our data, okay? We're connected, like from point of sale to back office, to loyalty, and, all, and apps and all these other systems <coughs> to do the core functions that serve the customer. But when it comes to the big picture stuff, those kind of get left to the wayside on a lot of cases. So we need to fill that gap. And we've been doing that for um, the last few decades and anything we need left. So here's our current solution for this. And this, this is a, a pre internet term. Does anybody know what the, the sneaker net is? Okay. So ba basically, it's using people to create the network. You know, we're internet or normal network, you know, systems are tied together. Instead, you're moving data from one place to another and using people to do that, okay? And we do this throughout everything we do. We got, you know, just the basic stuff from the store level, it's ship reports, day reports, all these sorts of things that have to be, you know, done, moved to the home office, cataloged in all sorts of different systems, putting stuff in Excel, we're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, Lars sends me uh, some updated price recommendations, I gotta go over and uh, collect some data out of back office, maybe get some stuff out of point sale, maybe some loyalty stuff. Team pulls it together in Excel, takes a lot of time, get to the point where get a little insight from it, maybe I go back and repeat it just to get to where I need to go. And we do this over and over again. And it's a lot of work to it. Okay? Uh, store is store number 12 is off on sales. Well, go collect me some data on that. Uh, maybe I've got to get some comparable stuff on some other stores, pull it all together. All of this is all ad hoc and kind of throwaway. Okay? And there's a lot of work in it. You spend a lot of time at the bottom of the pyramid, not so much time on, on where you're getting results. Okay. So the systems work pretty well for us. Okay. It, it's flexible, it serves the need, but things have been changing. It's a lot harder to do. And there's a number of reasons for that. So what's the problem with it? Well, labor's a lot harder uh, to use for this purpose than it used to be. It's a lot more expensive. It's a lot harder to find talent. Um, you know, labor's just not as easy to come by. Okay. There's also a lot of user error in the process. There's a lot of lot of moving parts. A lot of people moving stuff back and forth. There's a lot of opportunity for error. You you also have all of the uh, 
uh, changes happening in our world. Everything's speeding up. We've got supply chain challenges. We've got inflation, price changes, all these sorts of things that are impacting, forcing us to have to be more agile. Our competitors are rebranding and they're adding new food service offerings, doing doing all sorts of new innovative things with technology, maybe it's bringing a self-checkout or automated stores, or this guy's got an app over here. Uh, and you're always constantly trying to compete, but you don't really know how to get to where you need to go without making a gut decision or just chasing the other guy. Okay? So, because it takes too long to try to get to the information you need to do to make those decisions. So what do we do differently? Well, back to what Tony was asking at the beginning, what's a front office platform? Well, this is basically the missing piece, okay? Um, other parts of retail have been doing this for a while. Basically, we fill in the gap there of integrating with the focus on making data accessible. Same way the smartphone made data more accessible to you from a consumer purpose for all the things we use them for today, we can do that in our business as well by tying together the systems with a focus on data versus a focus on uh, you know, financial and ERP activities when it comes to the back office or loyalty integration or these sorts of things. Really focusing in on looking at the whole picture and being able to see the whole. Okay? Now, um, front office platform really has like, three key components, three legs of the stool that kind of really define what this category of software is. First of all, it gathers, organizes, categorizes, and aggregates data, but it uses modern data architecture and machine learning and AI to do that automatically. That's basically taking out all that work in that bottom part of the pyramid and allowing you to focus more on capstone. Okay? The other thing is always got to be industry focused. You can't buy one that's meant for grocery or boutique retail or whatever else because it doesn't have the right integrations for you because yours are different. And then it doesn't understand the data in the same way because those AI and machine learning tools, they all have to be trained and focused to get to the insights. If they're not doing the same thing that you're doing with people, it's not going to give you the same kind of answers you would have gotten. Okay? Lastly, they're end user focused. So these are focused on operational roles within the organization. Um, the folks that are doing uh, retail ops versus <coughs> folks that are doing merchandising versus uh, fuel management versus store managers, everybody has a different focus on the type of um, insights that they need to be effective in their job. And so on the surface, you've got dashboards, alerts, reports, those sorts of things, but they're focused in specifically to that person so they're not having analysis paralysis. I'm going to do a quick deep dive into each one of those three legs, and we're going to kind of get to some stories, kind of tell you how this matters for you guys. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about the, the data side. Why is that different? Why, why is it different than, you know, I pull data into my back office, or I pull data into my loyalty program, and I've got, I've got some analytics in those. Why is this different? Well, uh, it's in the way that the data is organized, okay? So... I guess the, the best way I can describe it, my, my son, he's, he's nine now, uh, he loves playing with Legos, okay? So Timmy has a bunch of Legos. He stores them in different buckets, okay? He's got a bucket for his space Legos, he's got a bucket for his pirate Legos, city Legos, uh, the ninja one. Um, uh, there's a show in there. Uh, he's got one for that, okay? So when Timmy goes and he wants to make something, he wants to make a spaceship, he does out a space like it. Uh, and you can play with that. And that's kind of how we organize stuff in our different systems like back office or loyalty or, or other systems. We go to that bucket and we try to make a decision there. Okay? Uh, same thing with our departments. You know, we've got different departments for things, but they're all big buckets. Okay? Now, if Timmy's trying to make a pirate spaceship, he's got to dump out two buckets, and it's a little more complicated. If Timmy wants to make a... Uh, uh, pirate ninja space fire truck, he's probably going to get uh, a little tired and worn out before he gets there and get frustrated and he won't do that that often. Okay? And the same things happen with your business. Now, a front office platform organizes it more like the uh, way, say, um, the master builders at Legoland organize their books. Okay? They're all categorized in a big library. Okay, Everything's cross-referenced and ready to go for the end use. And so that's the big difference in that 
with, that sets aside front office platforms from the way that other systems within your business organize your data because it's meant for that end use. As I said before, it's got to be industry specific. You can't go and you know buy one that's uh, meant for grocery. The integrations aren't going to be ideal for it. It's not going to have the right machine learning to be able to get some decisions because it's all about that that capstone of action website. Okay. So just because it's a solution doesn't mean it's your solution. Okay. And it's focused on the end user. Like I was saying, it, it you know if you're a uh, region, regional regional uh, Ops manager, you're going to have very specific dashboards and reports and scheduled things that are sent to you, as well as alerts that are sent to you in real time that are based around how you work. Okay? If you're a category manager, it's going to be different. You're going to be focused on a lot of different things. You don't want to have analysis paralysis. You can't have all the things in front of everybody. And that's where a lot of analytics systems um, kind of run down and, and you don't actually get the value out of this when, when it's not focus to the different roles in the organization. So these companies that are doing front office platforms, they're very high, uh, very high service oriented. So uh, it's a little different than most software products you buy. They're typically software as a service. You're going to uh, have a team working with you that's going to help guide you on specific business cases that are your initiatives that you're moving forward. Maybe you focus on operational goals, you've got two or three that you're trying to do over the next 90 days. They're walking with you to show you how to do that through the platform. Okay. All right. All right. Just so, just wrap up here, and maybe kind of get to some stories about how to use this. But on the surface, like basic things we've discussed, you know, obviously it's going to save time. It's going to, you know, create some efficiencies. All these sorts of good things there. But what makes it transformative? Well, it's in the how. It's really in how you use it. Okay. Um, so once you have all of that work that was being done at the bottom taken out of the equation, you've got more time within your team to focus on doing the things that drive profit, create efficiencies, uh, make you more agile. And so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit now. Uh, I'm going to take a break before kind of dive into some stories. Does anybody have any? Questions as we go through. I thought you were. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> All right. Um, so, it, with any type of analytics, there's really like three types, and you've got your um, your proactive um, type of analytics, and that's where something's out of the ordinary, managing by exception type of thing. Okay, and then you've got predictive analytics where you know, tell me what's likely to happen, and then you have prescriptive, and that's where, okay, you told me what is going on that's an exception, you told me what's likely to happen, give me some options on what to do. And so, um, these platforms combine a lot of a lot of different things for different kind of roles throughout uh, your organization. Um, so I'm gonna kind of start with some examples uh, with our customers of, of some of the, like, the most basic type of the management uh, exception that we'll kind of talk to some more uh, more detailed ones. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with a couple of fuel ones. Um, so, we had one uh, one of our customers, they, they were just going through the implementation process where we were uh, bringing all their stores online. And they were at like the last couple of stores bringing them online over the course of you know, a like, 30 day period. And uh, they, uh, they hadn't even had their trainings yet and stuff, so the project manager had, you know, had, uh, had scheduled the to get this one store online, it was like at the end of their geographic region. And right after it came online, it started getting alerts that the diesel price was way out of the market. So they're like, oh, like, well, there must be something wrong here. So he calls the operator up. He's like, hey, I know we haven't really gotten started yet, but it looks like you know, you're know you out of market on your diesel at this store. He's like, oh, we haven't, a regional manager hasn't been able to get up there in over a month. Like, it's, you know, they got a new manager up there. Like, it looks like something just fell through the cracks and sure enough it did. Um, another simple man by exception, like we get a lot, of, a lot of these with like right away these needles in a haystack kind of surface. Uh, a lot of chains still call out price updates in their, for the pricing protocol, and they will have a you know central pricing system. Uh, so uh, 
one chain that they call it, uh, the the uh, the office manager called out the price updates for the morning. We're supposed to make a change at like eleven o'clock in the morning. Uh, the guy swapped the digits for the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the cents, and so they were off by seventy cents. So <laughs> the uh, retail op op office manager gets an instant alert, and it was one of the first ones he got. He's wait, wait, what is this? Like the system must be broken. So he called, you know. So he reaches out, uh, reaches out to us, and like, no, no. He's like we should, we show him how to dive into it. And he's like, okay, I got to call him right now. So he calls him. We got to, like, but this whole process took maybe like 15, 20 minutes for him to get up to call the guy. He's like, uh, we're really busy. No, I, I made the change. Sacker, like we're good. Like, and I gotta go. We're busy. So he you know, hangs up. Lurk still, you know, keeps happening. Uh, so another 15, 20 minutes ago, he's like, no, I, I'm calling back again. He calls him back again. He's like, look, we've got lines at the pumps. It's really busy right now. He's like, no, I need you to yeah. check this right now. <laughs> So sure enough, you guys check it. The guy's got egg on his face. Like, yeah, like I swapped the numbers. So they were fixing it in about an hour. But had that gone on for five or six hours, and in an hour they had gone through like a quarter of their uh, their typical daily volume at that store. Like that would have cost them a ton of money. And so they were able to catch it faster. You got it. Being able to have this real time uh, alerting on anything that so it might. You know, and it's it's not just on fuel. We can do alerts on all kinds of things. Like, tell me, like, anytime something goes wrong, like, okay, if this ever happens again, like, so and so needs to know about it, or I need to know about it, or whatever. And you can you can just apply that into the system. If it ever happens again, you need to know. Um, those simple management by exception things, the kind of things that you don't have eyes on right now, you can put a thousand eyes on it, and then you got peace of mind. So the, those are kind of the, the simple type of things. Um, more proactive way uh, of using it is it, it empowers you to do a lot of small tests. It's very inexpensively trying new things. And you can use this in tons of ways. Our customers have done all kinds of things with this. Um, price optimization is, is one that you know, a lot of our customers are using this for. You. So you can, you can do uh, uh, proactive, uh, but every product has a you know, a, a price elasticity curve to it. You know, you want to try to get to the point where um, you're either maximizing your volume or you're maximizing your mark. Okay? And depending on what it is, you might want to go one way or another. So, um, one of our customers had got suggestions from the system that he should move his price on uh, bottled water, I think it was. And I think he'd always kept it at like 99 cents. He's like, oh, it's something that keeps people coming in the stores. Like basically above cost for it, so it was suggesting that you know he increase it. Like it was you know, try dollar nine, try dollar nineteen, or something like that. And so he goes, okay, I'm gonna try dollar nine at this store. I'm gonna try dollar nineteen at that store. Tested for a couple of weeks. Sure enough, over a couple of weeks, he came to the realization that he was able to maintain the exact same margin, uh, make uh, in the exact same volume that he had on average before at the dollar nineteen price. And so he was able. To, he, it didn't have any impact on his customers whatsoever. And so he, they you know, continue to do this over and over again for other things throughout the story. And it just makes it a whole lot easier because you can see where are the top opportunities to be able to make these subtle little changes in the news and hey, so, um, We have another op operator that's uh, really big into self checkout optimization. And he's done some really impressive stuff. He's uh, pushing like 50 plus percent on all his stores on self checkout. And he's been able to do that by the same process of you know, running small tests in two or three different stores and then being able to you know, iteratively uh, roll that out over time. So you know, one week it might be uh, you know, across three stores that he tests on, I think. Uh, he'll, uh, he'll try a uh, change in behavior for the associates in one store, and then they'll say something different in another store, and they'll be saying something different in another store to draw the traffic to the self checkout terminals or where they stand, or maybe moving a uh, placement of some shippers or some, some stuff that's up by the, the counters to kind of draw people over there. Uh, and so he's able to do this in very short time intervals, and it's very inexpensive for him to do, and he's been able to dramatically increase his, uh, his utilization of those, drive up customer satisfaction, bust the lines, all the stuff that he's trying to do with it. Uh, optimizing the use of labor. Um, another one of our, our operators, uh, 
was really he heavily focused in this area. Um, and they had always relied on their store managers to uh, uh, do all the shift scheduling on their own. It was kind of up to the store manager's discretion. Uh, so they decided to kind of change that around, and they went to a process where they were doing it using their customer traffic analytics in the, in the system. So you know, for every increment over 40 customers per hour, you need to have another shift. And by doing it that way, instead of everybody being scheduled at the same time the manager was there, okay, to, to make it, uh, you know, during the middle of the day, they had the shifts kind of broken up throughout the day to where traffic was coming in based on the traffic demand curves of these individual stores. And it was really easy for the manager to say, okay, it, for Tuesdays, we've got we to have people staff here, here, and here. And so that's when they would line staffing. Uh, and they cut on average about a shift a week uh, per store. Um, and not only did customer satisfaction go up because they were you know, able to keep shorter lines, be able to get customers through faster, be able to service people better, uh, but employee satisfaction went up better too because you know, the employees that were working, the shifts when the manager wasn't there, when it wasn't well staffed, they now you know, had more help at times it was busy. And then they took it the next step further and they're like, well, we can actually see this across now across all the different types of profit centers. <coughs> this. So uh, what does our traffic pattern look like for the, the fountain drinks? Okay. We're going to schedule cleaning around when that's busy. So it's busy during these hours, and those hours, and those hours. We're going to step up our cleaning during those times, right after. Uh, uh, when, when, when does coffee need to be uh, uh, resupplied? You know, again, same type of thing. When do we need to clean the car wash? Same type of thing. When do we do cigarette counts? Same type of thing. And they were be able to increase the efficiency of all these different activities going on in the store. Employees are happier. Everything's cleaner. Customer satisfaction goes up. Everybody's happy. <laughs> um, out of stocks and out of shelf, um, the system knows every single uh, uh, how <coughs> you should be selling and the demand curves them. You can set alerts out when the system anticipates that something's not selling the way it should. And so this might be you know, coffee in the morning isn't selling. Well, maybe they didn't resupply coffee. We can send an alert to the store. They can go check and refill the coffee. Uh, Maybe it's 4 o'clock on Friday, but like singles aren't selling. Well, maybe it's not in, my, not in the cooler. Maybe the tag fell off. Maybe something's blocking it. Uh, and this enables the store staff to be more agile to you know, what's going on in the store when they're busy. And so, uh, as well as that, customers are able to uh, buy the products they need when they come in the store. It's not going to uh, be missing. They're not going to walk out as well. Oh, promotional thing. So we had a uh, uh, one of our operators. Uh, they were having a having a planning meeting, and uh, somebody brought up that the previous year they did a family take home meal for I think it was Halloween. And so you know everybody's going home. You know come pick up a take up meal, and we're going to uh, uh, you know advertise this on social media and stuff like that. You know get a, get a quick hot and ready meal for the whole family. And uh, you know, and then go out and trip. Okay, so they brought this up in the meeting. Somebody else said, "Well, I, I don't think it was successful. How do you know it was successful? We shouldn't do that again." They're like, "Well, we can look now." So they they pulled up the platform. They looked. Sure enough, it was a profitable event. Um, but then the next question was, "Well, I think we had a lot of waste with it, and it's a lot harder to deal with waste when you're dealing with a big man than single serve." So how do we handle that effect? again when we go back to the small test scenario? So they decided, well, we're going to do it at these three stores that are similar. We're going to advertise on social media that is available at these stores, and we're going to do different quantities each one. And so in one event, for one day, for Halloween, they were able to figure out what their their actual demand should be for it. And so they could repeat it the next time. And then, so they're starting to do it for more holidays, and they'll definitely be doing it again next year. So again, short, simple test. It makes things easy. All right. I'll give uh, one more and then uh, and I'll kind of wrap it up here. Uh, so, uh, a lot of people have charity pump, pumps for calls. Okay, uh, we had one operator. They had a charity pump for a local athletic booster, and uh, it, was, it was going really well. They knew it was working really well. The school was happy. They were happy, but uh, the 
the folks, the folks in merchant, I found out that it was driving up their ice cream sales a lot. So at the next meeting, they're like, hey, it's driving up ice cream sales. Marketing people were like, yeah, we'll, we'll put a picture of ice cream on the ad that we advertised with the school. Turn up, went up even more. So all kinds of different ways. It makes you spend a lot more time doing the things that create results and a lot less time doing the things that are more of the busy work type activities. And so you can be a lot more profitable, you can be a lot more efficient, and obviously a lot more agile. So, kind of probably running up on my time here, so, so I'm going to kind of wrap up. Does it, uh, anybody have any immediate questions for now? Or, go ahead. I don't know if I missed it, but how long does it take the system to learn all of that to be able to tell you what you want to know? Almost. Uh, so the process is pretty, uh, pretty swift for you. So it takes us about 15 minutes to bring a store online. Right. And uh, typically, it will be able to pull back a significant amount of history at a point of sale right. uh, of months, if not a couple of years, depending on what your settings in there, but like how far you dump it. Right. Uh, but we, the system can be trained on like. 30 days or less of data. So it's like, okay. by the time that all the stores are installed within, you know, 15 to 30 day period, depending on how big your, your chain is, right. it's ready to go. You're ready to train. You're ready to focus on those first two or three uh, initiatives you're doing. So like, we always, uh, uh, our tactics, like, we don't want you to have analysis paralysis and we don't want to like, have a drink through the fire hose. Okay? Right. So um, during your kickoff, you'll, uh, um, plan with us the first three things you'll want to focus on. Maybe it's on ops or promotions or whatever, wherever you, the best starting point for you. Right. So, okay, we're going to work on this, this, and this over the course of the next month or 90 days, depending on how big the nut is. Okay. And uh, so we get to assess what that when we bring on some new people and we bring some more people that way. You get that time to first success, you get ROI from the beginning. Right, right. So, so it's, um, it's better to use multiple stores than just one store on this. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We, we always start with, the, we, do, we try to do all of them at once. Okay. And we do that by, uh, we don't do, uh, at least for our company, we don't, we don't do initial fees. It's just uh, a straight SaaS monthly pricing fee, so it, it's very low uh, cost to entry. Okay, appreciate it. Thank uh, you. We want you to get the whole value out of it. Right. right? So if you're just looking for a peak hole, we go back to the problem. And that's yeah. not the problem. Yeah, right. right. you got to get all of it. So uh, we're exhibiting as well. We're at Booth 417. Um, love to get to know you all better. Uh, if you got some time, like we can continue to talk here afterwards, or if you can come by and see us, uh, love to uh, continue the conversation with you, learn more about you guys, challenges you guys are having as well.